This new IOD spring release is so good. I started out with a thrifted chair and this is DIY cake batter. I put on the leather back of the chair and I also blended in a little bit of the queen bee. Both the jars were pretty much at the end of their um, container. So I did end up grabbing another cake batter and it went down a little bit easier. So I just wanted that lightness in the center of the chair and then the queen bee on the outside. This chair is for my daughter's office and she is a yellow lover. So one coat I put on the back of the chair and then went back with a second coat and filled in all those lighter spots with the cake batter in the center and then outlined with Queen Bee on the outside. The clay-based paint dries a little bit lighter so you can see that it's kind of light and chalky, but that'll all get better. And you just keep blending in using the two different colors. These are similar colors, so they blend really well. If you're struggling with blending, just go ahead and use two light colors and you'll figure it out. The cake batter is really a pretty color and it goes so well over that black and at queen bee it's a gorgeous yellow color kind of like a golden roddy color and you can see how thick that clay based paint is and it co the coverage that it has is unbelievable it's the best paint i have ever ever used and you can blend so well with the two now this is one of the new spring release iod stamps this is birds and bees i was really excited about it when you get a stamp for the first time you want to take a piece of 110 sandpaper and just sand over the top of the entire thing before you take any of those stamps off and then you just give it a turn and go over top of the stamp one more time and that'll take all that manufacturing um, slime off of it and it'll give you a nice good adhesion to your ink. This is IOD black ink and the IOD ink pad. I liked the placement of these birds and bees so I did the entire stamp and stamped the back of the chair. I had to do this upside down because that chair was a little on the wonky side to get in there. So it's curved back. You just want to make sure that you push that stamp in there without wiggling it. I did wiggle it a little bit, so one of those birds is just a little um, double imaged, but I didn't mind that at all. I had some blank spaces and I really did like the bees and the flies, so I stuck a couple of those tiny ones in there. Now, next for the chair, these are the new molds, the toadstool, the hidden hollow, and it's gorgeous, got so much detail in it. And then uh, um, this one is something pond, I can't remember, but I love that frog. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna do cornstarch and you're gonna cornstarch that so it comes out a little bit easier. Using your air dry clay, you can push it all in there and then go to the edge of the mold and it'll come right out with especially with using the cornstarch just make sure that your back is nice and flat and he has so so much detail this fern leaf i could not wait to try it along with this other frog the dragonfly the hummingbird the gecko all of them are just so cool so go ahead put that cornstarch in there and then mold that up again. This air dry clay works really, really well, especially if you soften it up in your hands ahead of time. I used quite a bit of air dry clay, but I couldn't stop playing with these molds this time. They were by far my favorite part of this spring release was all three of the molds. They definitely have a spring garden vibe to them, and I'm all about that spring garden and my mother-in-law, she loved frogs, so this is perfect for my daughter's office chair to have this pair of frogs on there. 
I kept going in and molding more parts. This is now the fern leaf, which I couldn't wait to do. So I went ahead and I did that fern leaf and you wouldn't believe the detail in that. The IOD sisters have really got their molds down pat with so much detail in them. I can't wait to try this with resin because with resin, it seems like the details pop just a little bit more than with the air dry clay, but it definitely worked with air dry clay. Now look at the detail in that fern. You'd swear that there were two leaves coming out of there. I did the hummingbird, thought I would use it on this chair, and I didn't end up using it on the chair, but I did end up using it on another project. So I have many of these projects going on with this um, new mold release. And this hummingbird, he is so good. I had to make sure that the back was nice and flat. If you happen to do that, like I did, went too far down, you just smush some more clay in there and it'll be perfectly fine. Just smush it in and rub it around and then pop him back out of there. And now we're gonna do the toadstools. These mushrooms, they are so real looking. I put them on flower pots. I put them on boxes. I put them on boards. And they, I, I just couldn't stop using them. So if, I don't even like mushrooms. So if you like gardening, you're gonna love this new mold release because I don't like mushrooms. I never have, but I do now. And they're called toadstool, which um, when I seen the name, I was like, oh, let's put that toad on top of one of these mushrooms. So it, it now has toadstool. The name fits it. That was the image at the front of this video. I went ahead and I kept using all of that air dry clay, making sure that the back was flat so it would sit nice and flat on that chair and uh, just kept making more and more mushrooms to make a nice little scene for this chair. So here I'm putting together the scene that's gonna be on the back of the chair. If one's gonna overlap, I can cut it apart and then just push it on the so it looks like it's on the back side. This one I wanted it a little bit shorter, so I chopped off the bottom and then I'm going to chop off the side of this mushroom on the top so it can sit nice and close. And that's how you can get them to form into each other. But this is going to be the little design on the back of that chair. You take some wood glue and glue all the molds down and let them dry. This chair is on its back so the molds will sit flat. If you have a surface where it's sitting upright, you're gonna wanna tape them down with some masking tape. Next, after they were completely dried, I went and took some of the DIY Queen Bee paint and I painted all of the molds. So I didn't even care that it was a little bit sloppy. I'll fix that when I wax it. Next, I wanted these bottom of the chair legs to be a little bit on the darker side. So I took the black velvet and made the bottom of the chair legs black and blended it into the queen bee and it gave it a fun blended look. Like I said, DIY paint is very easy to blend. You can just take a water bottle and squirt the paint and what it does is it reactivates the paint and so it blends really, really well. This is the queen bee, the cake batter, and the black velvet all being blended into each other and getting that nice worn out look. Now the molds were all dry, the paint was dry, and I went in and I did a little bit of wet distressing. With the DIY paint, you can wet distress very well. The paint is not... Um, fully hardened at this point. So it'll distress off. And as soon as you put a sealer on it, then it's no longer distressable. <laughs> so you, um, at this point, you can take a baby wipe and wipe off those edges and give it that aged look. 
So this chair that I thought that they would age more on the arms and on the seat a little bit. So I went ahead and just aged in a couple different places. Now, since it's in an office, it's going to get a lot of use. So I went and used some of the DIY Big Top to seal it. And the sealing of the chair is when the magic happens, in my opinion, because it brightens up all those colors and it brings out all that detail. I really did like the stamp and the design that the IOD sisters laid out for the stamp to be on the backing. I never even took it off yet. I used it another time and left it exactly where they placed it. So the seat is going to get a coat of Big Top as well. If you ever used Big Top, don't use, don't get freaked out with how it has different levels of um, coloring because as soon as it dries, it's, it's going to all fade back into each other and you won't have all of those different shades of yellow. It'll be just fine. So just go ahead and put that on. My daughter is not a dark wax person, so I went ahead and used some white wax. She likes her yellow to be as bright as it can be. She is a bright yellow girl. So to bring out some of those details in those molds and the buttons on the back of the chair, I went ahead and used the white wax, which it, I'm also a fan of white wax, and especially in the summertime, it just gives it kind of a muted, nice, bright look to it. So you're going to put that white wax on and then take a dry cloth and buff it back off, leaving some of the white in the crevices, and it'll just give it a nice, soft look, kind of an aged look to it as well that you're gonna get inside all of those crevices and leave um, the details popping out there. Here is the chair. I didn't have any daylight to do this, so you got a couple of shadows in my house, but that chair is pretty darn cool. Now I went ahead and used this hollow mold, and this is fairy doors. It uses quite a bit of air dry clay, but it's totally worth it. So I went ahead and um, molded this door with the air dry clay, making sure that my back was nice and flat and that clay was in there nice and tight. And uh, pulling it on the edges, you can pull that excess right off of there, making sure that you have a nice flat back so that it fits onto your surface nice and flat and doesn't have any ripples in it. So scrape as much off of that as you can. And uh, then we're gonna flip it over and gravity's gonna help us and out comes that beautiful fairy door. I had a couple cutting boards that I put these on just to make a little scene with it. And here's the cutting board with the fairy door and a couple mushrooms. And then I went ahead and molded this dragonfly. The dragonfly is not very deep but he has so much detail and he's a perfect looking dragonfly. I love dragonflies and this one, he needed a little bit more on his tail. So you can just squish that right in there and letting gravity help me out. Here was the dragonfly and he's gonna go right up there on top and he's gonna make a perfect scene for that. Remember the hummingbird that I molded? Well, he's getting a little home right here on this breadboard. And then there's going to be a couple mushrooms down below, the same as I did that other one. All the gravity just helps you pull that right out. The mushrooms, I found out that they do not have to sit flat. They can tip their tops a little bit, giving them a little bit of character. So this one was a little bit bigger mushroom and I just tipped its top a little bit and gave it a little bit more character. So make sure you experiment with them. Don't just make them nice and square on the top. Just tip their tops a little bit and it, it actually helps a little bit to tip them. Now I'm gonna take that wood glue again, gluing these mushrooms down onto the cutting board and making their fun little designs. If I have any excess glue, I try and wipe it off as best that I can. And 
The wood glue will dry very quickly. The air dry clay, I usually let it sit overnight because if it's gonna have a few cracks in it, I can fill them up. See, there I go ahead and I tip that top of that mushroom and it adds just a little bit of character to it. So they're tipped just a bit. Again, I couldn't just, these molds have my heart and I, d I didn't know that they would. I'm sure that they're gonna have your heart as well. There was this old box that I had and I thrifted it. It had some engraving on it. So what I did is I just molded up some more of these um, toadstools and uh, mushrooms and the frog, the fairy door. This little snail is super cute. And I molded up a bunch of those and put them on this box. And now I'm going to, when I go ahead and paint it, I'm going to fill in some of those um, engravings that are on there. I could have done it beforehand, but I just left it to do it at the end. I'm using that little black dress and I went ahead and put black on it. Now I have salt wash where I need a little bit of texture. So I went and took this square stencil that I had and took that salt wash mixture, which is a little bit thicker. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't wanna do that. I wanted some of that texture to fill in that engraving that was on the backside. So changed my mind in midstream here, which is, normal for me to change my mind and I went ahead and I put some of that salt wash mixture and took my really scruffy brush and made a bunch of texture on the back like it would be a like a back wall then I brought my stencil back again and did this square look I wanted it to look like it was bricks on that back wall so I went ahead and brought in some more of that white tried to finish that off instead of doing the bricks and getting myself confused. So I went ahead and did the entire thing with that salt wash mixture. And the white is the white, the DIY white linen. So filling in, it, you don't have to be perfect. You can leave some dark edges if you want. It'll save you on the dark wax later. Now I went ahead and just added my brick look to that backside which would make it look like a brick wall it doesn't have to be perfect it those bricks don't have to all be um, laid out perfectly so I just went ahead and spotted wherever I wanted the bricks to be there was a little bit empty spot there and so I just went ahead and did that now the side of the box this I was going to do some stamping on it on the side of the box, but I just thought it might be a little bit busy. So I went ahead and did the same process with the white linen and salt wash and then using that stencil. The breadboards, I dry brushed a little bit from the breadboard first and thought, oh, that's what I want to do. Nope. I want to make them a little bit heavier than just dry brushing. So I went in and added that paint just a little bit thicker. This is white linen also, and also painted the edges. The fairy door is getting a little bit of character and along with this other one. So this is the mushroom and the hummingbird and he also got a nice coat of white linen on it to cover up that little black dress that was on there. I didn't film the little black dress, but you've seen me paint before. So you just paint over the entire thing and let it completely dry. Now I'm going to let these completely dry and go in with my baby wipe, which is going to wet distress some of this white paint off, exposing that little black dress that's underneath, giving it a nice aged look. And I went ahead and just, I didn't distress this one. I just left it as is and went in with a coat of Big Top, sealing it up and making it nice and um, sealed in there. So when I go ahead and put some dark wax on there, it doesn't soak right into the paint. I'm using clear wax on these breadboards and putting that clear wax totally on. And then I'm using the black wax and going over the top. When you use clear wax, 
underneath the black wax, it'll be like a barrier so that you can remove most of that black wax and it won't soak right into that porous clay based paint. And if you want to use a little bit of a clear wax as an eraser, you can brighten up wherever you put that. So it brightens it up to be a little bit on the whiter side, which helps bring out those details. These breadboards are so stinking cute. They'd be perfect in your kitchen. I use the vertigus wax, which is like a greenish color to highlight some of the leaves that are on the door. And then I used the golden rule, which is another DIY wax and just accented the door a little bit with the knocker part and the handle. And of course, that dragonfly needed some sparkly wings. And I did go over and give him a little bit of a bluish green tint to him and then went back over with the golden rule to shine up his wings. So it really turned out cute. I really like the way it turned out. Same with the hummingbird. Did the clear wax, did the black wax, wiped it all back off. And this box as well. Remember, I had Big Top on there, but I also went over it with clear wax. So it had two barriers. I didn't want this to be too dark. So it has some nice black in the crevices. And it is super cute. Aren't these molds the best? I love this project. It was so much fun. Next, I have this um, box that I thrifted. It was, it looks like it's an, how it used to hold an instrument of some, of some sort. And this is the next Minot's Pages. This is the transfer that um, is brand new in the spring release. You got some veggies and some eggs and you got butterflies and um, mushrooms. I love those mushrooms. The fish, you could just put this right onto a board and it would be a nice cabin decor. Here's Farm Fresh and a little bit of crinoline. I'm going to paint this entire box with Farm Fresh and then lighten it up a little bit using that crinoline and uh, um, lightening it up so that some of those um, details come out and it, it blends really, really nice. I put one coat on. That's all this box needed. The DIY clay base paint is, it's very good. It's very um, thick and usually you can get by, depending on the wood, with one coat. So the inside of that box was really dry so I could get by with one coat. Now I wanted to lighten it up a little bit on the inside. So I went ahead and took some crinoline and just kept blending and blending and blending until everything just blended right in. I might have had a bit too much of the crinoline, but it all works out. You can get it to blend right in with um, the box. On the top, I used the paint inlay. I wasn't gonna use the paint inlay, but I don't know. I do like the inlays. I like the look that they have. So I had three different pages that I wanted to use. When you use the paint inlay, you have to go in with wet paint. So the top of this box did get a second coat because I had changed my mind. And I did put the crinoline in the middle again and blended that out. So it had... Um, that blended look and farm fresh is really, really a pretty blue color. I love that color farm fresh. So you make sure that your paint is nice and wet. Keep going over it. If it is drying up too fast, you can take your mister bottle and give it a good mist so that it stays wet. With the paint inlays, I found out that if you mist the painted side, the inlay side, that they will adhere just a little bit better. So go ahead and mist that before you lay it down on your wet paint. So now we're gonna lay that down on the wet paint. There's two full sheets and then I used, I cut out some of the designs and put them stacked up on the other side. So it's like an apothecary box that we're, that we're making right here. Then you're gonna go ahead and mist the entire paint inlay. So getting it nice and wet, the design will look really dark versus the light. 
I use my IOD brayer to brayer over the paint inlay, which I think makes a huge difference on how your paint inlay adheres. I don't like the harsh edges when I cut it, so I went ahead and put some of the cut pieces, there's nothing on them, they're just cut pieces of the paint inlay, and I attached them into the wet paint so that I wouldn't have those harsh edges from the wet paint and the inlay where the inlays did not touch. After it's all dry, you're going to come back in and give it a nice mist. That image is going to turn black again. And then you're going to pull them off. After you wait about 30 seconds, you're going to pull them off. And oh, this design was so cool. I love those bees. My favorite. My favorite is those bees. You're going to distress with a baby wipe. And do not, do not touch that paint inlay because it will bleed. Now, I put inside this apothecary case, which I thought would be like if I was thinking if you open it up and somebody had their their butterflies with the stick pins in them like you used to do for school. And then I decided, nope, I don't want to do that butterfly. I want something else with the words on the bottom to match the other side. So I opted for the vegetables and stuck that down on the bottom. Now I'm going to tell you, this transfer will give you a workout. I scraped and scraped and scraped and scraped and scraped to get this to adhere down. The bottom of the box, I used the dry DIY paint and it had no sealer on it. So then I decided, okay, I'm going to put a sealer on the top lid of the box and let that dry overnight and see which way worked better. Let me tell you, I don't think either way was faster. They both worked. This is the dry side of the box. And that this is the um, DIY big topped side of the box that sat overnight. So it took me a long time to put these transfers on. That's a lot of tiny little images. And when you're putting an, a transfer on, if you have a big image, it'll start, You they call it, um, um, I forget what they call that, um, catch, catching the wave, that's what it is, catching the wave. On this one, there's no wave to catch because there's such tiny little images but I finally did get them all on and I think it was totally worth it. I took a coat of Big Top and put it over top of my transfers and put everything, got it a nice seal on it. It brightens up that farm fresh a lot and brings all those details out. It's so pretty. This is a really fun transfer. Now, this is the inlay. So, it's sat for a day, and now I went over it with my brush and big top. You can see that I am not scrubbing. I am just very gently wiping over top of the paint inlay with my brush and making sure that I do not scrub it. I just go ahead and quickly go over everything. I did the entire box because some people have trouble with this. The paint inlay will smear. So you want to be careful to not smear that paint inlay. After you get everything all quickly, my, my brush barely touches that surface. After you get it all quickly um, sealed in there, you're going to let that dry. Then when you let it dry, you can go back over it with the second coat and then be a little bit more aggressive with it because it's all been sealed in. If you're afraid of this part, you can go ahead and use a spray sealer and seal that paint inlay in with your paint sealer and then go back over the top of it with another sealer of your choice. So I'm, I've done this for a long time. I I can feel how I'm supposed to hold my brush and the light touch that I'm supposed to have, 
but be very careful because it'll smear quickly. I wanted to use white wax on here and give it a bit of a softer look. So I went on the edges so that that white wax could get stuck in those corners. And the box had a little bit of the wood was very um, grainy. So some of the white wax got stuck in those cracks in the wood. So I went ahead and put it all on. And what it's going to do is it's going to give it a bit of more of a soft look when you put that wax on. And we're going to buff it back off again, but it still gives you a nice soft um, look like this was somebody's apothecary box. And I did the same thing with the inside. Now this is big topped and it's a transfer, not the inlay. So everything is all sealed in there. And I went ahead and put that white wax into the corners, which is where I wanted that white wax to continue to hang out and then softened up the middle with just lightly going like dry brushing with this white wax over the, the top of the transfer. Taking a dry, lint-free rag, I go over everything and buff out some of those areas where I don't want that wax to be sitting and leave it stuck in those corners. So now it looks like a nice, soft age box. Here's some pictures of it. It's, uh, I don't know, I don't even know what to say. This I didn't think that I would like this transfer, but it's good. It reminds me of my nephews because they are, were always ones to have bugs with stick pins stuck on these foam, foam boards. I had a wood board that I thrifted. It had a saying on it. I went and put just Farm Fresh on it to cover up that saying. It's time for an upgrade. It was a Hobby Lobby sign. Just put some Farm Fresh on it. I wanted to use that Birds and Bees stamp one more time, and I thought it would look good being just um, on a sign. So I went ahead and gave this a single coat. Then I stamped. I did end up giving that a second coat. I didn't show you that, but there was a second coat on there. I used the stamp again exactly the way it's laid out from IOD and stamped that right onto the top of the board. This time I didn't wiggle, so I didn't have a double image. And it's so cool. I did use the brocante. Um, transfer and went over top. I used a bunch of different scraps that I had and went over top of um, some of this stamp. I do like the look of stamps and transfers on the same piece. So when you have that transfer, you have to um, burnish, you have to um, rub it with that stick until your transfer turns white. It's going to turn a little bit of white and then you'll know that it's stuck to your project. You can do this either with it big topped or without. Just make sure that it's either one, your paint or your big top are really dry. That's burnishing it. So you're gonna take that that um, plastic sheeting that came, the, it, the transfer came off of, this one comes off really, really quick. And you're gonna take that plastic sheeting and just rub over the top and making sure that it's all stuck down there. This B, I do like the look of some of the transfers when they're cut and hanging off the edge of the project. So here was a flower that I had cut for a different project. So now I'm just gonna put this extra piece onto this board and making it look like that flower is hanging off the top of the board. And then the B, I also took him and I cut him into pieces. Oh, I did use this word also. I cut the words apart. The transfers are so fun. You can just cut them any way that you want and stick them onto things. I did like the way the words 
were underneath some of the um, apothecary, the Minot's pages. And so that's why I thought on this one is to just have some words underneath these birds. I don't know what the words say because they're in French or something. I left this all in because some people like to see my thought process and how I arrange them all. So if I don't leave it in, then it it just gets lost. I did end up cutting a B out and I was going to put him right here. And then I wanted a second B, but I didn't want the full B. I wanted a piece of the B to be what you see. If the transfer does get stuck to the backing, you can lay it back down and just go ahead and rub on it one more time. So now this B, I couldn't figure out where to put him, but I do like him like on a corner. So unfortunately, I cut him the wrong way. <laughs> I didn't even realize I did that till I went to put him on there and I'm like, oh no, that was wrong. So I had to flip him around so that it looks like he's crawling from the top down. And then I'm like, nope, don't like that. So he got stuck on the bottom. So he's crawling up instead of down. And it, I do like the look of the bee coming off the page and then I just took his other side and I put it somewhere else on the board so that it looks like there's another bee over there that he's hanging off the edge. Your eye will know what all of that is. Now I used pennies from heaven to finish up the sides and put a nice um, even coat of pennies from heaven on the side which makes a little bit of there's the top side has been big topped, so it does have a sealer on it. So then I just go ahead and I rub that pennies from heaven with my finger, making it a bit on the distressed side and purposely going onto the edges. That's part of my photography brain that when I go ahead and I put that um, silhouette around the outside that's kind of what they try to do with photos as well is just give that um outline that silhouette on the on the outside of your photograph so this has got a silhouette of copper around this entire um painting i'm really really liking this i like the transfers along with the stamps i like those two different looks now I went in with some black wax again, and um, I'm going to do that kind of vignette around the outside. So I'm getting a lot lighter in the middle, and it's darker on the outside. I'm going to take a dry cloth and wipe that back. It really gave it a nice aged look to it. So this is now ready to hang on the wall. And this was a $1.99 thrifted wood blank from it, an old saying that just needed a little bit of an update. Oh, love that bee. Here's another project that I did. A couple more. I did flower pots. Here's a little bit of the release that I didn't use. Antiques. Antiques. I don't, I don't know how to say it. Le Champagne. I did not use. This one's got a full-size rooster. That rooster is huge plus it's got two roosters on it birds and bees this is the one that i did use i love it i love all those bees look at how they placed them on there this is bungalow this is the transfer um uh, you can do these just individually this is my knots pages this is the one i did use now for the paint inlays melange melange 
And this one, I do love it. I love those bees in a row. I don't know. They got my heart. Summer Villa. So this one has a big scene. I can see this being put on a dresser. It would be absolutely gorgeous. And now my favorite, the molds. And you've seen me use them. I've probably used the heck out of them already. If you want any of these projects, you can visit my website at thepaintedphotographer.com and order them up. I'll ship them right to your front door. This um, mushroom was called toadstool, so of course I had to put a toad on his stool. <laughs>